I work for BP. Uh, my role at the moment is uh, leading the BP's global HR modernization program. Um, what that means in that mouthful is uh, we're really looking at transforming how the HR function serves the business um, in 80 countries where we operate. Within, within BP, we have a captive center, which is called GBS. Uh, they're primarily focused currently on finance, procurement, some of the other functions. Um, we're kind of early days in the HR journey. Um, we have a HR hybrid model, so we do use GBS in a, in a limited way. Um, uh, together with some outsource providers, uh, BPO arrangements. Um, and what I'm really looking at as part of modernization is uh, there are three parts. So what does the business partners in HR do? What does the center of excellence do? And then where does the HR operations piece, whether it's shared services, whether it's outsourcing, what's the right strategy for that? The, the questions we asked ourselves is, do we follow the traditional standard shared services path like finance and procurement had? Um, one thing which was quite clear is that the consumers of the other functions sometimes don't tend to be the entire workforce. Um, HR touches every single employee and therefore what's the right way of giving them the right service in the right time, right quality. So the question we asked ourselves is do we just lift and shift? Do we take what people are currently doing, um, putting it into a captive center? Um, we then quickly uh, realised that we do the same process multiple times, whether it's salary review or talent review. We do that you know, 20, 30, 40 different ways around the world. So do we standardise and then shift into an environment or do we standardise, automate and then shift? Um, we then also played around with you know, what makes sense to kind of continue with our outsourcing arrangements. V, what's the right balance uh, putting it into our internal shared services? So. Um, we, we are still on that journey of uh, making some of those decisions. I think in a nutshell, um, from an HR perspective, it, what we want, what we'd like to do is remove some of the mundane tasks for humans to be doing this, whether it's HR advisors or whether it's the line managers, so then they can really focus on adding value to the business and growing the business. Um, there is just, the, because of compliance, data privacy, data protection, there are so many transactions, there are so many forms, there are so many things which, uh, you know, these expensive assets we have, uh, the time is taken up. So what we're really trying to do is what is absolutely necessary for, to have human touch and where can you have a technology touch. So value adding things, for example, is where we've, we're shifting our focus um, to rather than buying the talent, uh, someone who's got five years of experience as, uh, to a graduate um, recruitment policy. So the value is how do we bring in the people at the right time in the organization, they get the right coaching, training, mentoring, so that they become, you know, they are primed to be, be the next CEO or the next CFO. So the other part was, you know, we could go ahead and do this systematic change by standardizing process and putting new, new shiny toys and you know, really going on that journey. The second part was after doing all of that, we also needed to make sure that the organization makes a cultural change. So systematic change, second was the cultural change. How do we change the hearts and minds of the organization? And the third part was how is the workplace going to change? And how are the workforce of the future really going to adapt to new ways of working? Can business intimacy be remote? Um, you know, is, is, is uh, a face-to-face FaceTime um, of the future. So, so we started, uh, we, are, we are really exploring some of the innovation which is out there. We then categorize some of our thinking in three areas, you know, uh, so workforce of the future, what's the workplace of the future, what's the workspace of the future, and what's the work case of the future. So if you think about um, the workplace of the future, well, you know, flexible working, job sharing, crowdsourcing, you know, do people still need to come into an office? You know, could they be located anywhere if the right technology platform is available, right? So how is that going to shape the way we do things? Um, the workspace was then around, you know, we're removing telephones from desks. All right, so how are you moving from you know, emails to instant messaging or telephones to video calls? Yeah, so the workspace um, around us is, is really, you know, it has changed in the last five years, but it's going to you know, continue changing. What cases was then around what people do? 
when I want to get my pay slip, when I want to um, approve a holiday, yeah? So some of those things, well, do I have to do those things in nine to five? Or do I have the right tools that I can actually manage my time whenever I want to do that? So that's some of the thinking we're doing. I'm challenging the myth that the new millennials are really that different. Um, what I would say is the millennials are different in that um, they may not stay with an organization for 30 years. Um, they may not be motivated by only money. Um, however, I truly believe um, you know, some, of, some of our self-reliance, some of our technology tools are actually being used by the older generation because it's, it's what they use with their grandchildren or their children, right? So they've even adapted to that. So in, in, in terms of how people work, I think that's, you know, that, that boundary, that difference is, is almost becoming quite irrelevant. But coming back to, to your specific question around, you know, what is BP doing in this space and how we're thinking about this? So I think a number of things. I think, um, firstly, there's something about the brand. You know, how do people continue to affiliate themselves to the brand? Um, certainly when I started, you know, you go to a university milk round, um, as it's called in the UK. You know, you'd want to go and talk to BPs of this world. Now they probably want to go and talk to the Googles and the Facebooks of this world, All right? So how do we create the right brand? And the brand sometimes comes with, inter you know, how does the internal employees think of the brand, which then translates outside. So we are using a mixture of technology, a, a, a mixture of having latest thinking around, you know, one of the areas is performance management, you know, in traditional sense, we would run a, you know, twice a year, you have performance conversation, you then get a ratings at the year and, you know, is that going to continue to be the same? So what we do and how we do, um, we're, we are really challenging some of that and we, we are taking some steps to really innovate in, in some of that area. I think the last thing I would say is that um, where, where um, we're trying to break is some of those orthodoxies. So the organization, um, people in their minds, you know, hold some orthodoxies in their head that this is not possible. So I think we are doing a lot of work in that space is, okay, you said that, you know, Henry Ford asked uh, when he was setting um, around building the first car, the consumer said, we want faster horses, right? But, you know, if he didn't really challenge those orthodoxies and how things happen, then we wouldn't be where we are. So, so I think that's, that's how I would summarize it.